Okay, here we've got a really rare figure, especially in the UK. It's um, hard to find, and I mean, you know, if you watch my channel, and you know I've got quite a lot of Han Solo, vintage Han Solos, but they're all the big head versions. I've got a Han Solo on a 20 back uh, H, I think, with the big head, and a 21 back Han Solo with a big head, Empire Strikes Back German cars with a big head, uh, Palatoy Return of the Jedi with a big head, a um, US um, 77 or 79 back with a big head on it with the alternate picture. Plus I've got the tri logo Han Solo with the big head, and so this is the small head version. This is the first ever figure I had when I was a kid and um, so this was the way I remembered Han and then they changed it to the big head and as you can see I've got the strobe light on I'm going to turn that off in a minute because it's making me feel sick so you've got Han Solo on a 12 back card this wasn't cheap this was very expensive I had to get from America and I had to pay customs duty on it to Her Majesty's Customs and Excise, the scumbags. But you know, this is one of the figures I really needed. So, this is a re really rare figure. It's just come today. It's taken ages to come because it's been held up in customs because you know I had to get some money to pay the customs charge. So, here we go. Okay, let's have a good look and then I'm going to switch the um, uh, strobe light off. So, really nice Han Solo with the small head and everyone knows about the, this variation. So, let me go switch off the strobe light. Okay, so here we've got the Han Solo. I've switched the strobe light off because it's making me feel giddy. Um, Han Solo on a 12 back C card with the original picture there. And let's see if we can get a good look at the small headed Han figure. So, it's a bit out of focus there. Let me move back a bit. So, this is also known as the he uh, Han Solo Pinhead version. And then the other version is called the Big Head version, which is. And then it says 1978 Kenner Star Wars 12 back C Han Solo small head. Card gets 80, bubble 85, and the figure gets 80. And it's a really nice item. To get a Han Solo on the 12 back is a really hard thing to do because he's quite expensive. The big head version is even more, supposedly more expensive, rarer on the on this card, so that goes for slightly more. But you know, they're quite expensive. Nice figure though. Comes with a small blaster, piece of card between the legs, which is typical of the Han Solo, and. Looks fantastic. I've always wanted a small headed Han Solo, but it's taken me ages to track one down. I'm glad I won this one. Not happy that I have to pay custom charges as well. That really takes the biscuit. A really nice item. I know there's a few of these on the, uh, YouTube. Some of the big time collectors have have this. So there's a guy in Germany who's got a couple of these, I know that, on YouTube. So his collection's way much better than mine. But finally I've got the Han Solo with the small head.
carded. I've got a loose one of these graded as well. But here you go. Small head Han. 12 back card. Excellent figure. 80 grade. With this card getting 80 and the bubble 85. The bubble's nice and clear. There's a slight little bit of edge wear around the what do you call it? Tab where the hang where you hang it. You see it there. The famous logo there that you have get only get on twelve and twenty back and twenty one back cards. And then the Keno the LP there stands for long playing toy. That was soon dispensed with that LP. Comes with a little blaster said. Uh, can hardly see his ears, his hair's so long around him. Great figure though. Han Solo small head on a 12 back card and it's a 12 back C if you want to find out more about all of this the best source to go to is the John Kellerman book which is should be a new version of that coming out soon I don't know why it hasn't come out yet and that will be an absolute must if you're a vintage collector. collector. I've got a few reviews up recently of all the different books I've got. Some of them are pretty specific Star Wars, others are a bit more generic. They have just like other action figures and sci-fi collectibles and all that sort of stuff in them. So, you know, but the Kellerman book is pretty good. So, I'd check that one out. And then if you look at the back of this, Here's the 12 back card, which I've shown before. So, what other 12 backs? Um, so, really nice. Oh, yeah, the Ben Kenobi I've got is a 12 back. And the Princess Leia, that Princess Leia, the white one, and that Ben Kenobi there. So, really nice 12 back card. And how to pull out the telescoping saber, which was soon abandoned favour of just to push down. The land speed, that X-Wing and um, TIE Fighter and then the display thing you can put your action figures on. And that Han there is the small headed version. The Luke there is the blonde haired version. If you want to see a brown haired version of Luke I've just got one of those carded. That is pretty rare. That's an Empire Strikes Back Canadian card. And some good Canadian stuff on eBay at the moment. There's a few couple of Canadian transition cards that are wor worth checking out, especially if you live in the States or Canada. Then you don't have to pay import duty. And there you've got the pop proof of purchase. And closing date for that offer was May the 1st, 1979. That's a long time ago. And this card is a classic, classic design. I think Gentle Giant has sort of, with the tw jumbo fig figures, have sort of copied this design as well, pretty well. So, you know, excellent. 12 back. Very nice. And let's see what's up. One to the card again, one more look at the front. So this is a super rare, rare, <laughs> Han Solo, small head. The thing is, he's actually rare on an Empire Strikes Back card. If you, talk about getting it, get, if you found this figure on an Empire Strikes Back card, it's super rare. And that would, you're talking about a couple of thousand dollars, maybe. So that figure is e even rarer on later cards. It, it can be found on a 21 back and Punch Strikes Back card. And if you've got one of those, you must be laughing. So, 
Uh, I'm not sure if it's more valuable on a 20 or 21 21 back Star Wars card either. So, but even to get this on a um, 12 back card is you're talking hefty rupees. If you go on the eBay, most of these are in the USA. If you go on eBay and type small head Han Solo, you'll see uh, the average price. You'll be pretty shocked. And this is not a bad, not a bad grade. It's an 80 with card 80, bubble 85, figure 80. So, and then the big headed version goes for even more on a 12 back card. But look at that piece of history there. This was the first ever action figure I got. Obviously, mine would have been on a Palatoy card, and this is on a US Kenner card. But still. This is the first action figure I ever bought back in 1978. So, 1978 to now, how many years is that? 34 years ago? Oh my goodness. <laughs> 34 years ago, this was the first Star Wars figure I ever bought. And now I've got one again. <laughs> back then it cost 99p, this one cost. Uh, Many, 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 many times more. So, uh, I've noticed even the uh, VOTC Han Solo is going for about 25 quid on eBay. So, you know, this is a popular card combination. I don't see why with the v vintage collection Hasbro didn't put this picture on the Han Solo with the medal. Well, they need to do bring that card, this card back again with their new Han Solo. Because everyone's got to have this card. Looks the uh, this is such a classic. This and the Luke, Luke with the, his hand on the knee. Those two pictures are what you call them, the dog's bees, as we say, as this figure is small head okay I remember how later on in about 81 when I got the Millennium Falcon I, I, I got the big headed version of this and I didn't like it at all but now I don't know which version I like better the small or the big headed version they're both great great figure great picture there and I'm going to take some photographs now. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed looking at this super, super, super rare Han Solo small head, little head, pin head. So on a Kenna US 12 back C. I've got loads of reviews about this figure. Uh, and the uh, different cards I've got it on. So, cheapest to get this on a vintage card would be on a Return of the Jedi card, maybe a Palatoy or a US Kenner card. But even then, you're talking about a couple of hundred quid if it's graded. Maybe if you get an ungraded one. But everyone wants this figure because he's one of the first 12. And it looks pretty cool in that sort of gunslinger outfit. So I mean loose you can get and pick them up for a tenner. And then graded loose uh 20, 30, 40, 50. So and then obviously the most famous version is the back in ninety five when they bought back out that four pack and they redid this figure and a lot of fans were really peed off about that but it says on the back of the figure that it's got the date stamp for 95 so it's an um what's it emulation is the or copy what's that throat oh, I don't know I'm just babbling on and babbling on and babbling on about this Han Solo that just came today, I guess, 
I'm excited. It's like almost like Christmas. Christmas is how it was back in the 70s. <laughs> anyway, cheers. I'll probably do more film and video of this figure because it costs uh, pr a pretty penny. Alright, cheers. Bye bye. On board. And here's a man who's a perfect gentleman. He smells like linen and lavender, you know, and you're saying, and he's the nicest man. You know, and he's playing this, this Governor Tark, you know, the man who's he's going to kill everybody I know. For those that are young and those that feel young, Star Wars as a comic book come to life. The lines are campy, the action rapid. It's, it, got, it gets difficult to get the words out sometimes because you're saying, you know, the plans and specifications to a battle station with enough fire, you know. He broke at one point, he went, he said, I want to invite you to a ceremony that will make this battle station better, higher, higher, because it was getting all, you know. As a youngster, Carrie Fisher's reading interest ran more to the romantic. Her role in Star Wars was her first encounter with science fiction, and she was enthralled by the experience. I, I saw 2001, I saw, you know, various science fiction films, but I, I didn't sort of grow up with it around me. I'm afraid I never got any farther than Ray Bradbury. So I don't know if this is my first kind of intergalactic experience. We shouldn't be getting paid for it. I get to shoot a gun, I get to swing around and get handcuffed and who could ask for anything more? Our interview sketch could be titled Science Fiction Revisited or Portrait of a Navy Brat. Whatever you choose to call it, it's the story of a young man whose childhood fantasy came true in a most profound way. The middle child of seven children of a U.S. Navy captain, Mark Hamill grew up with television, Japanese monster movies, and Batman comics. An amateur magician, his greatest trick was his ability to make his brothers and sisters disappear by offering up a magic trick. He could pour milk in a rolled up newspaper and make it ruin the rug. His greatest ambition was to be an actor in a science fiction movie, but the closest he came to being one was in front row seat at a movie house. That is until writer-director George American Graffiti Lucas cast a virtual unknown Mark Hamill in the now highly successful science fiction space fantasy, Star Wars. It's like a dream come true, because I'm very, I've always been interested in fantasy and, and science fiction and comic art and whatever. I would think that that some of the early science fiction films I saw when I was a kid really made me interested in the movies. Seeing fantasy and seeing fairy tales happen on the screen, you know, really incited me to go on and figure out what it was all about, you know, and I was always interested in movies as a kid. It's a great... It's just like, you know, I find myself... I, I'm so thrilled. I mean, I think, gee, I'm getting paid for this. I'm getting paid for playing cowboys and Indians in my backyard. I've been doing this for years. Um, my parents had given all hope up for me, you know. But now, here I am doing this. What Mark is doing is fulfilling his one lifelong fantasy. He's Captain Midnight, Batman, and the Green Lantern rolled into one. In Star Wars, he's the ultimate hero, Luke Skywalker. Well, he's uh, 19, and he works on a desert planet, Tatooine, which is all desert, and, and their business is, is operating these mechanical things that absorb vapors and water, moisture. I mean, for miles in every direction is just nothing. And one by one, all of his school friends are going off to join the Star Wars. And um, I keep staying on another season, another season, you know. And of course, at that age, you think, gee, I'm getting, I'm over the hill before I'm 21. And he, and basically what happens is through uh, a twist of fate, he's able to go out and, and uh, participate fully and be very important in the, in the outcome. And uh, I does a lot of growing up along the way. He's just kind of a, your average farm boy, you know, not superior intellectually. A little more athletic than... I mean, he's willing to jump into danger because he doesn't see it's there. It's just, hey, let's go. Actually, when you see the way I am heroic, it's, I'm very, I'm a very lucky kid, you know, I'm not exactly Errol Flynn, you know, but uh, through uh, luck and a little bit of skill and help from friends, as usual, the, the good guys win. Mm. All the people in the white hats are, are winners in this movie. We, we just point at the bad guys, fire once, and 40 of them fall down. Actually, Mark Hamill's true life hero is the man he was lucky enough to play opposite in Star Wars.
My mother had two favorites when I was little, Jack Lemmon and Alec Guinness. And although they really didn't take me to the movies often, if there were one of the, if there was an Alec Guinness comedy playing and I was living in a military base where you get old movies on a big screen, I saw all those, Lavender Hill Mob and uh, The Lady Killers. My favorite, one of my favorite farces in movie history is The Man in the White Suit. Um, I always wanted to meet him, see him on stage or something, and now to be working with him again. It's like if I dreamed up the perfect job, it would be in a big romantic space opera with Alec Guinness. Remember the stories of actors and actresses being discovered in drugstores and department stores and then being rocketed to stardom? Well, the Hollywood story still lives in the form of Harrison Ford. Harrison, known as Carpenter to the Stars, is a professional carpenter plying his trade amongst his fellow actors and the studios. Although he starred in George Lucas's American Graffiti, Harrison returned to carpentry after the picture, taking occasional roles in television like Gunsmoke and Ironside. It was a chance happening that his friend George Lucas, now director-writer of Star Wars, passed by the doorway of a casting office that Harrison was hammering on, and immediately signed Harrison to a starring role in his new picture. It was a case of being at the right place at the right time. I have a lot of respect for George. I have a lot of respect for uh, his vision and for his uh, technical capacity. I think he makes good movies. Prophetically, and all pun intended, Harrison Ford will truly be rocketed to stardom as the dashing starship captain Han Solo. Well, the character is described in the script as a pirate extraordinaire. He's kind of an outlaw. Becomes involved in this idealistic odyssey with the, with the kid and the princess and the sage old warrior. And uh, his function is to be so a sort of a, a counterpoint to the idealism of the princess and the kid. Harrison is not a by-chance actor. He is a studied professional who's used his carpentry trade as a means of survival while waiting for film roles. Well, I started out in summer stock um, and did several productions in the Midwest before I went to Hollywood. I mean, I, I started carpentry because uh, it's the only thing I had the clothes for. Although Harrison has appeared in a number of television shows and motion 